What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see, we're gonna be discussing head hairs. I have a variety of head hairs in front of me and we're gonna be talking about the difference between each and every one of them. Let's get to it. So we're gonna start off with uh, with this head gear here. This is a Wicked Boxing brand head gear. It's actually a, it's a final brand based in Oxford, California. It's, it hasn't been too long that it, it, that it first arrived to the scenes. Quite similar to winning, uh, similar to a winning headgear, very light actually, um, a lot more affordable than winning as well. It's a lot, it's a lot less expensive than the winning brand, and like I said, quite quite light on the head. It's, it's not heavy at all. It comes with the cheap protection as well. And uh, I actually have the privilege of wearing this headgear, this headgear myself. Uh, very one of the most comfortable headgears I've uh, I've ever worn. Uh, very 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 comfortable when it comes to wearing it in sparring sessions. And I, I really recommend it if you, if you're if you're someone who likes you know who likes to have the the winning headgear who likes to feel comfortable in sparring, Wicked Wicked is a place to go. Like I said, it may not be the most popular brand since it, since it barely came onto the scenes, but it's very affordable and it's very similar to winning. So go ahead and check them out. You you won't be disappointed. Next, we're gonna go to this headgear here once again. Cheek protection on it, and it's a title brand. You know, a lot more uh, titles, a lot more known. It's been around a lot longer, so a lot more known. Once again, uh, it has the same similar design to a uh, to the to the cheek protection when it comes to the winning headgear. So it may feel a little similar, or it may seem a little similar. I'm sorry, but it feels quite different. Now, when it comes to this one, for example, this one tends to be a little lighter than wearing this one here. But once again, very affordable. And I've, I've actually worn a title headgear before. Uh, it's it, it's not it's I'm not saying that it's it's bad, but uh, th there's a difference. There's a difference when it comes to wearing title headgear. This here is sweat absorbent as well. So if you if you're someone who you know maybe doesn't want to um, doesn't want to keep their this doesn't want to be uh, cleaning their their gear you know very so often maybe this would not be the best fit for you because like I said it's not leather and it is it is foam so it isn't absorbed so it. Same thing with uh, with this one here. This one also, it's foam, it's not leather, so it'll absorb sweat. So with these, you want to make sure that you're keeping your keeping your uh, your equipment and your gear maintenance um, every so often. You don't want it, you know, to be smelling funky. And now we go to this one here. Now, a little different here. Once again, title branded, but as you can see, it's open faced. Uh, the reason for this being open faced is because when it comes to amateur competition, you're gonna want this sticker to be on the head gear here. This sticker is important uh, that's on the headgear or this uh, this patch here because it, the headgear must be certified for USA Boxing when amateur competition takes place. Once again, uh, once again, that fell down. Once again, foam, so it's also sweat absorbent. Sweat absorbent, like I said, you do need to maintenance a, a little more often. Um, it's actually, uh, it's actually, it, you know, it absorbs sweat quite easy. So after a few a few times that, that you've used it, you are gonna require to maintain it to keep keep it keep it fresh. Um, like I said, open headgear. I actually believe it or not, this was uh, the the preferred headgear that I prefer using. Why? Because it, you have full vision of it. Put it this way: if you were driving in a if you were driving, you wouldn't want a face mask to be in front of your windshield. You want to have as much vision as possible for for ongoing traffic, for coming traffic, for pedestrians, etc. So it's the same thing when it comes to headgear. Notice that of all the headgears that I that I demonstrated thus far, none, none of them carry the, the the bar here. And the reason being was because uh, I am not a big fan of the bar. Uh, when it comes to the bar, a lot of people use it for protection. And yes, it does protect you, but at the same time, it minimizes, it minimizes your vision. So you want to be able to see, have you want to be able to see and have full vision as much as possible so you're able to see the the coming punches your way and on top of that when it comes to the bar since it's there for protection a lot of fighters tend to depend on it they depend on the bar that is going to protect them and when it comes to removing the head here they end up not wearing their they and most of them end up not moving the head the reason being is was because that during sparring they were depending on the bar to protect them from coming punches so like I said, uh, open, open, uh, open face headgear is the best way to go. Um, it's gonna get you accustomed to moving your head, and uh, and at the same time, it's gonna it's gonna get your face accustomed to the leather that's gonna be touching you in the fight. A lot of people may say, well, you know, you you want to protect yourself uh, from any injuries or any any cuts. True, but at the same time, like I said, uh, 
with the with the open face head gear, you you're gonna be protecting yourself by moving the head by moving the head because you're gonna you're gonna realize that there's not a bar here uh, protecting you from the punches. So you're gonna get out of the habit of moving the head and not getting hit square in the face. So open face is the is the way to go. I truly recommend it. You know that's that's the personal preference that I use, and also I do not allow my fighters to use any any headgears with any any bars across. Next, we're gonna go to the Everlast headgear here. This headgear, it's actually it's called a Steve Free Foam here, or it has the three foam. I'm sorry. This is this headgear once again. It's it's a lot more. It's a lot bigger, as you can see. It's a lot wider than the than uh, than the other headgears that I've demonstrated thus far. So. It is a bigger target when it comes to wearing it. Your head is gonna feel a lot bigger. You're also gonna notice that you're wearing something a lot thicker on your head when sparring. Uh, once again, open face here, and it's also foam up. It's also foam here, so it's also sweat absorbing. Uh, like I said, when it comes to this, it is a lot thicker. It is a lot bigger, so it does feel that you're that you're wearing something bigger. So you may be exposed to a bigger target when it, or you may be a bigger target. I'm sorry, when uh. When when sparring, you know your your head is gonna feel thicker. I've worn I've worn every headgear that I have that I've had here. I've had the privilege of wearing, and I can tell you I can tell you with my experiences that this headgear was great. But at the same time, you know I was not a I was not the biggest fan of it fan of it because my head was was a bigger target. Although I, I you know I consider myself to have a good head movement. Uh, punches would still scrape here. I would still get scraped here, even though I had I had the. I, I would move my head. I would still feel the punches, you know, I guess glance through here, glance on the side. So, uh, like I said, good headgear. Uh, I wore it in a few times. It's not as heavy. It is a little, it is, it is a little bigger. It's not super heavy how it may look. But like I said, you are exposed to a bigger target. So if you're someone who wants to minimize your target, I think everybody should. Uh, maybe not the best option, but if you're, if you're barely getting into boxing and you're looking to buy your first headgear because you're tired of wearing uh, of, you know, you're tired of using the headgear that everybody uses and you don't want to exchange sweat anymore. Uh, I I would recommend it. Like I said, it's very affordable. Same thing with the title boxing here. Also with the winning that fell, or not the winning, I'm sorry, the wicked boxing that's similar to the winning that fell down. Let me get this for you. Uh, like I said, very absorbent. Same thing with the, with the title brand here, the, the USA Boxing Certified Competition headgear. Uh, there are great headgears, like I said, uh, bars. As you can see, none of these have the, the bar across. I'm not, not, I'm not a fan of them at all. Um, I don't allow my fighters to use it. I didn't use it. So, uh, like I said, uh, I'm not a fan of them. And uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully, uh, this video was uh, was helpful helpful for you. Uh, like I said, uh, before before buying, uh, just like I said in the, in the, in the previous video about, about the gloves, before buying a headgear, I recommend that you maybe ask a gym partner, maybe like a friend, or maybe try a, try a headgear that's in your gym. Try wearing it, maybe spar with it to see how you like it. Uh, you may think that, one, once looking at a headgear online, you may think that it's gonna be the preferred headgear for you, and it turns out to be the complete opposite. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna just throw away 50, 60 dollars, or even 200 bucks, depending on the price of the headgear that you're gonna be buying. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful for y'all. Like I said, uh, be, be be mindful of the headgear that you choose. You know, you're good. It's it's there to protect you from any any cuts. It's not gonna protect you from from your from from the from the in, from your from the inner brain. So it's there to protect cuts. It's there to protect swelling. But I do want I do want fighters to know before I end this video that the headgear is not gonna protect your brain. Put it this way, it's like saying you're gonna you're gonna put a marble inside a water bottle and you're just gonna wrap tape 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 all over uh, all around the bottom. At the end of the day, if you shake the bottle. The marble is still gonna shake just as much as if it, as if it would have shook in, even if there was no no tape in the bottle. So, um, yeah, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.